You're listening to the Business and Life Podcast, where seven days a week, proven entrepreneurs share their success stories, failures, and give you true value on how you can build a great business and an awesome life with your host, Mike Olivas. John, welcome to the show. Hey, great to be here. Thanks for having me. Thank you, sir. John Nemo. So tell us where you are from and uh, where you're calling in from and a little bit, maybe something interesting about yourself. Yeah, I live in a frozen hellscape known as <laughs> Minneapolis, Minnesota. Oh, and yeah. at six, five to six, I really question my sanity right now. My, I just, I don't know why I'm here, but that's where I live. That's where I grew up. Uh, but what I do, I guess something <laughs> interesting about me, gosh, I don't know. Work related or, or fun related, family related? Uh, any, anything, I guess. I get, get a chance to know you a little bit. Yeah, how about, how about just uh, personal related? Yeah. Yeah, I, I would say uh, one of the things I'm a voracious reader. Like, I, I grew up as the son of two English teachers, so I literally cannot find enough time to read. That's all I want to do. Like, when I, when I get to retirement, I just want a bunch of books. Like, that's yeah. what I love to do. My kids think I'm crazy, uh, but that's what I love, man. I love reading. So that's, that's, your, that's kind your of escape. thing about me. Yeah, no, I think that's awesome. It's funny. I, I, was, I was not a reader at all um, yeah. until, until I kind of found, I think, the self-development world, and I just became obsessed with it. Yes. But, um, you know, I'm more of a listener. It's more of an audio guy, so I live in the audible world on Amazon and go through yep. several of those things at the gym every week. But um, definitely, I definitely uh, love, love hearing that. There's others out there that are just as nerdy as I am when it comes down to just reading and getting lost <laughs> in something or hearing other people's stories. Tell, tell us a little bit about what your company does, linkedinriches.com. Yeah. So what I do, uh, my full-time focus now is I do online courses, coaching, done for you, done with you, training around how to use LinkedIn to win new business. Uh, so I have a specialized focus on coaches, consultants, entrepreneurs, small business owners, anyone really in charge of their own destiny online, having to find and bring in leads and bring in revenue. I've been doing it for about seven years had a ton of success initially started my own company when I quit my day job back in 2012. It's a familiar tale, right? The entrepreneur leaves the safe corporate world, but I literally had a lot of risk because I left a safe six figure day job, jumped with one client, enough money for 30 days. And I had my wife at home and our three young boys and she wasn't working. She just wasn't taking care of the kids. So I had to make it happen. Like I didn't have a safety net, didn't have investors. I didn't have savings. And what I found all that while back, back in 2012 was I could quickly find clients using LinkedIn once I discovered how to use the platform to find people, but way more importantly, how to engage people there, how to replicate the real life face-to-face, one-to-one way that we sell and sell well on LinkedIn. So I've been doing that for the last eight years now, showing others how to do the same thing. Got to rewrite profiles for people like John Lee Dumas, your good friend. Yep. Bob Berg, Ray Edwards, a lot of the who's who of, of Chris Brogan. So really have had a lot of success there showing other people how to use LinkedIn to find leads, win business. So why, why, cho- why did you choose uh, LinkedIn specifically versus the other platforms? Yeah, I, I had seen something there. So even back in 2012, uh, I had used LinkedIn to get different jobs and, and used it as a personal branding kind of platform. And one of the things I realized when I jumped from my day job, I was looking for B2B type clients. I was opening a marketing agency. I needed business clients. And, you know, (laughs) I didn't have any money. I I couldn't travel. I I didn't have a big budget. I could do local coffee meetups, which I found to be mostly a waste of time. A lot of what I call professional footsie, you know, in the networking groups. And we're all kind of there just trying to hard sell each other. And it was really awkward. (laughs) <laughs> what I saw with LinkedIn was, man, there's hundreds of millions of people on this platform and it's essentially like Big Brother. They have all the information on everyone. It's one of the world's largest search engines. And so what I kind of figured out with LinkedIn early on was, this is like Google for B2B leads. Like yep. you can find anyone. And the best part of it, Mike, is you can find the exact decision maker. So I can literally find the CEO of the company or the owner of the you know, business that I need to talk to, I can connect to him or her one-to-one. I can get a direct one-on-one conversation going instantaneously. I can get his or her personal you know, email, cell phone, and that just short circuits the whole process because now you just go right to the decision maker. You immediately have an opportunity to talk to them, and that's really why 
I saw LinkedIn, especially think about it eight or nine years ago, people were not thinking of it that way. <laughs> now everyone's on it because like Gary Vaynerchuk and everyone else is like, LinkedIn, you know, but yeah. eight years ago, people still thought of it like a job website, a resume yeah. site. And it's now the hot platform, which is ironic. So I'm like, I've been here for a decade. Now everyone's coming in, but it's only easier. It's only better now. And, and I think once a people awaken to the opportunity on LinkedIn, now we have to get into, well, how do you actually win business? Because there's a whole lot more behind that once you get started. Let me, let me try to break that down for our listeners that not, might not be as, um, you know, PPC, CPC, or social media oriented, right, in terms of the advertising. LinkedIn's <clears throat> algorithm, one, I think is extremely, it's much more, and I, I don't say this too lightly because I've had bad experiences with the other side, even though it still works and we still use it on the social media side is that their algorithms legit. And I say that in terms of they're also their audiences that you build out, or you're not throwing a bunch of things against the wall to see what sticks in LinkedIn. If you happen to be a client that knows who you want to be in front of, and they have things like a position or a past position on their resume, then that's when you call John Nemo to help you get in front of those people. Or let me tell you what the flip side is. You use Facebook, Instagram, um, uh, Twitter, or a, you know, Google, I think, is a different game in terms of how, how the search engine work on the world. But it's just, you, you get a chance to, to be directly in front of the person. And sure, your message isn't going to stick every time. But guess what? It's not going to stick anyways if you're just trying to spend tens of thousands of dollars just to get in front of that right person, right? And so a, a company like John's can help you get in front of the right person. Then it's all about let's talk about what copy. How, how important, and I like talking about, and I'm going to go off a little bit of the beaten track with marketing stuff because I love it. Plus, I think it's important for our listeners to understand because it's not brand new, but it's a lot of people that might be having a company or that might have the budgets now to spend on, on marketing and want to know where to spend it. But how important is copy to your clients? Yeah, it's, it's everything. And, and yep. to take a step back, for anyone listening who's like, okay, I want to use LinkedIn. I want to get active on it. Step one that I always teach, I teach three simple P's. I call it profile, prospecting, and profits. The first P is your LinkedIn profile. That's your personal page. And the number one mistake, Mike, that I still see almost 99% of people making on LinkedIn is it reads like a resume. It's written in the third person. It, it, you know, it's all about you. And here's the thing, nobody cares, right? <laughs> like one of my favorite books, we talked about my reading nerdery and self-improvement. You know, that, that is a passion of mine too was, Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People, he said, your ideal clients, your ideal customers do not care about you. They care about themselves, morning, noon, and after supper. And he said that in 1936. And when I got on LinkedIn in 2012, I thought, man, my profile reads like a resume. Who cares what I've done, awards, accolades? So you have to flip it around to be all about your client, your ideal prospect. And one big thing with this is on LinkedIn, the riches are in the niches. Yep. You can't be everything to everyone on LinkedIn. If you try to do that, you'll be nobody to no one. No. That's right. So, for, so here's a, just to give you a real concrete example. I left my day job in 2012. I had one client. He owned a debt collection agency. That was it. That was my only client. So I had worked at a trade association helping debt collectors with PR and marketing, you know, industry stuff. I was like, okay, I got one client a debt collector. What should I do on LinkedIn? Should I try to get doctor's offices and dentists and small? My, the best advice I got was no, just market to more debt collectors. So my LinkedIn profile went from John Nemo, CEO of Nemo Media Group, which was just me with a folding card table, right? In my <laughs> house. Like that was a real, you know, it went to- That's your John headquarters. Nemo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It went, the, the LinkedIn profile literally said, John Nemo, debt collection marketing services, debt collection marketing. So that was my LinkedIn headline. Now, step two is you go out and connect and find and engage debt collection agency owners. Because again, LinkedIn's a big search engine. Like you mentioned earlier, I can look for people by profession, job title, company. So I could instantly find thousands of people who owned their own debt collection agency. Guess what? When they get an invite from me and the headline on my profile says debt collection marketing services and you're a debt collector, you're intrigued. You're like, yep. well, this guy's all about me. He's all about helping people like me. And here's one free line I like to give people to start your profile, to really get this client facing idea to hit home for you is instead of talking about yourself, the first line of your profile says what we do or what I do. Okay. All, all capital letters because it's, you're not, 
you can't really format copy on LinkedIn with bold and italics. There's ways to hack, but I wouldn't recommend that. So what I do, all capital letters, colon, I help insert your target audience. I help this target audience get the benefits they want by providing my product or service. So what I do, I help audience get the benefits they want by providing my product or service. So the first line of my profile said, what I do, I help debt collection agencies get more clients, increase sales, and improve their reputation by providing industry-specific PR and marketing services. Now, if you get an invite from me on LinkedIn and you're a debt collection agency owner, and that's the first thing you see, you're immediately intrigued. Well, you're all about me. You're all about helping me get what I want. And whip so, them. It's the whip them yes. what's in it for me? Absolutely. What's I, in it for me? And so yep. that's where you start. And when you talk about copy, that's the kind of copy that resonates is this client facing what's in it for you. Cause instantly think about this, Mike, there's over 700 million people on LinkedIn. You're getting invites every day, all day. You're seeing messages and status updates. You're giving each person you look at about one second and you're immediately looking at their face, their name, and maybe their headline. And you're right. immediately qualifying. Can they do anything for me or not? Right. Retired school teacher delete, right? There's nothing in it for me. Right. Selfishly. Right. Uh, debt collection marketing services. There's something in it for me. That's right. I'll take this invite. I'll listen. And, that's, and, and that goes vice versa. That's like some teacher trying to add you to pitch some kind of educational program. You're like, Nope. Why? Because you're thinking the same thing. There's nothing in it for me. And nothing I think in it for me. And the whole concept here guys is to realize like no one's thinking about you as much right. as they're thinking about them. In fact, they're not thinking about you at all. And it's, and it's the truth. And it's, sometimes it's hard, especially when I speak on a college campus. Think about that when I tell people in the social media world. I'm, I'm writing a book called The Anti-Social Media Network. And it's like, it's just reminding people. Like I try to, I go, raise your hand if you woke up wondering what your friend was going to post this morning. Zero raises. Okay. Right? And then raise your hand if uh, you were thinking about what you're going to post this morning. Everyone raises. So is it fair to say that you're the only person thinking about you? And it, just, it was powerful because like, oh, shit. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, look at all this time I'm wasting on posting, you know, the kind of pancakes I just had this morning. So, you know, I get it. Everyone, is, everyone wants uh, their self absorbed and that's kind of more of the social media angle. We could talk about that all day. But I think when it comes to the LinkedIn angle is you gave some really good value there. And I want to repeat it, guys. If you have a LinkedIn account and if you don't, first of all, get one. I'm sure you do if you're listening. It, and you're an entrepreneur out there. Here's what, we, here's what uh, John just kind of dropped down on the great copy. We just talked about copy. He just gave you what to put in your profiles. What I do, all caps, right? And it's I help insert target audience get your XYZ service. And in that, in that area, correct me if I'm wrong, John, it's less is more. We have a very short period of time to capture that. Make it a sentence or two is I help you. XYZ audience get XY my service, which is XYZ service that you offer. Once you do that, it's just short and sweet. People remember you, they might accept you, and then you follow up, and that's the process. Yeah. Life Nation, we're all striving towards different goals. Maybe your goal is to finally quit the eight to five time. Quit your job or take the you know, next step with your existing business. Whatever the goal may be, regardless of your reasons, if you are serious about taking the next step and finally trying to build the life that you deserve, the life that you want to live, take the leap of faith with you. Go to michaellevis.com and let's discuss your goals and life. It's 100% free. There's no obligation. It's M-I-K-E-O-L-I-V-A-S.com. Schedule a quick call. I'd love to help. Right. Yeah, it's what I do. I help this audience get the benefits you want by providing my service. Awesome. And then what I do, you can have a long profile. There's, there's no problem with a lot of copy, but okay. you do it top down. So you start with what they want most, which are those benefits. So it's what I do, that sentence, how I do it, what makes me unique, what others say and put in some testimonials, how it works, talk about your process, case study, we helped a debt collector, you know, increase revenue X, Y, Z. Yeah. So like you can expand it that way, but just start with what's most important. Cause it's kind of like, you've got to lure, not lure, but you've got to give people free samples, get them, you know, eating a few sample cookies. So they want to buy the whole box. Because again, like you said, we're all self-absorbed. What's in it for me. Okay. You do marketing. Great. Do you have any examples? Do you have any accolades? Do you have any testimonies? You do. Okay. What else? And then we need to talk about that you have step one is that client facing profile, Mike, but step two, and this is where everybody struggles on LinkedIn is how do I actually engage a prospect? 
right? Like, yeah. stop me if you've heard this, listeners, but <laughs> how many of you get a, a, a LinkedIn invite? First of all, it's generic. It's not even personalized. And as soon as you accept it, you get like somebody asking for something. Yep. I want to have time for a free demo. I'd like to offer you this product. And the big thing you've got to understand on LinkedIn is way too many people are trying to marry you on the first date. They're yep. trying to close you immediately. Yep. You've, whatever you're asking of someone has to be in direct proportion to the amount of trust you've earned. You cannot connect with someone on LinkedIn, no matter how good a fit they are, and immediately try to sell them. And so what you have to do is what I call practice and professional courtship. And this is where LinkedIn is brilliant. Because again, let's say I find Mike and he's a prospect and I can immediately look at your page. I can see where you live, where you went to college, where you've worked. Maybe you've listed some volunteering or you know, passions, hobbies. I can now break the ice immediately with you. So there's lots of different ways that I can come in and go, hey Mike, I see you live in Puerto Rico. Man, I live in a frozen hellscape in Minnesota. You're so much smarter than me. Like bring in a little humor, yeah. break the ice. So cool to see that you know John Lee Dumas. That's a friend of mine too. You know, like all of a sudden we're bantering. There's, there's no quick ask. And then what you do is you pivot and ask permission with your one-on-one -on -one messaging. And this is the script I give people with the copy is, curious, are you interested in blank? And blank is the topic that you want to sell them something about. So for me, I'll say, curious, are you interested in winning new business with LinkedIn? And then you ask permission. You say, if you are, I've got a great free blank, free webinar, free podcast, free ebook titled whatever. And then you say, if you like, uh, just reply yes or thumbs up and I'll send you a link. If you don't want it, no worries. Have a great one. So glad we connected. And what we're doing in that messaging sequence there with that one-on-one -on -one is we're breaking the ice. We're talking about where someone lives, went to school, talk about their mascot. If you look at LinkedIn now with the one-on-one -on -one messaging experience, have you noticed you can do animated GIFs? You can do emojis. You can yep. send little video messages. You can send voice messages. They want it to be like real-time, one-on-one, instant messaging, texting, very informal, very friendly, I call it like the world's largest one-on-one -on -one coffee shop meetings, right? Like you're in there, you're bantering, but you're quickly pivoting to offer them something of value. And the big thing, the other mistake a lot of people make with LinkedIn is they just drop links into messages. Well, I'm sure you want my webinar. Here you go. Like, I'm sure oh, yeah. you want my demo. Here you go. Like, yeah. no, I didn't ask for it. We yeah. want to be asked. We want to buy. We don't want to be sold to. So ask me, John, are you interested in learning how to improve your podcast? reply yes and I'll send you a link to my ebook. And then what you do is you get them off of LinkedIn onto your landing page to sign up for your webinar, get your ebook, whatever it is. Now they're in your system. You've got right. their email, you've got their details, get them off of LinkedIn and get them into your little ecosystem. Yeah, your drip, right? Sure. Yeah. Off you go. Lead nurturing campaign. I think that's, you're absolutely right. There's too many people out there. And if you're listening and you're thinking it's a numbers game and that's why you do this, it's, it's still not going to result. There's gonna, you're going to get very, very little ROI and, yep. and cost, or your cost per acquisition is still going to be high if you're just not doing it the right way, which is just, you know, you don't stop you know, kicking down the door and then going to the couch and then taking the hand and going directly to the bedroom. That's not the way this works, right? <laughs> and that, that's what you're doing here. Instead, just knock on the door and see if they answer. And if they answer, ask to be invited in, right? LinkedIn is their home. Don't allow your, don't assume that you're just going to be able to knock down the door and go straight to the bedroom because that's what a lot of people are doing. Here's the link. Here's what I am. Here's what I'm all about. Okay. Yes. That's, yeah. So I think that you're, you're absolutely right. There is just like, let's slow down to speed up. Okay. Uh, let's say business and life nation here's listen to this. Like that's really important to understand that. Okay. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe John's onto something here. Maybe I shouldn't just be spamming people because because the link, no matter when you send it automatically people's mindset is going to be, it's not necessarily a spam is, Nope. I don't know what it is. I'm not going to click on it because I don't yes. know who the person is. Right. And, right. That's, and that's really important. I think that's a great point. So how, how have you been able to, um, let's say build a life that you want to live with your business? I love to talk about that because that's important for our listeners that are entrepreneurs, struggling entrepreneurs. Some are many are obviously successful and they're successful and struggling. That's possible by the way. Right. But so yeah. struggling to figure out how to do it, but you've been able to build a business and also build a life you want to live. How have you been able to do that? Biggest thing for me, uh, I've been doing it for almost eight years. Uh, for the first several, I struggled a lot. The core thing for me was mindset. Yeah. And I know this is something, if you work on your own, if you're an entrepreneur, a small business owner, coach, consultant, 
you're often isolated. You're often your own worst enemy. You're in your head. Yep. And one book that finally clicked for me, it's called Psycho Cybernetics. It's by a guy named Maxwell Maltz. He's kind of the godfather of self-image and, and you know, self-talk. And lots of people now steal from him, which is great. <laughs> like Tony Robbins and everybody else. Yep. But for whatever reason, here's the thing I learned. Uh, income improvement follows self-improvement. And you cannot outperform your self-image. So whatever you need to do, uh, and what I needed to do was get the head trash out of the way, all the childhood stuff and, and all the trauma and things that I went through because it was impacting my business. So that was one part, core part was the mindset. The other thing that's really allowed me to have the lifestyle and the freedom that I want is monetizing all my knowledge with online courses, automation, and content marketing. So what I mean is, I said earlier, I'm the son of two English teachers. When they had a classroom of students or prospects, whatever, they were limited. They were in a college or a university with 30 people in a room, and that was it. Whatever impact they had was stuck in that room right. for that moment, you know, in the 70s. And now we have a global classroom. And whatever knowledge you have, if you can bottle up your expertise, your knowledge as an entrepreneur, coach, consultant, and then put it out in a in a way that I call infotainment, you give them the information, but you also entertain them. So it's done in an entertainment. Like, look at Gary Vaynerchuk. Like, I, I'm a huge fan of his because he's just fun. He's fun to listen to the Jersey thing and the swearing and the antics. And, yep. But he gives great info. Like, yep. it's actually solid principles and business and marketing advice, but it's done in an entertaining fashion. Is okay. Gary the only one saying these things? Absolutely not. There's a million people you can choose. When I teach LinkedIn, I use lots of um, 1980s pop culture analogies and I talk about pulling up my tube socks and going to the video arcade and putting quarters <laughs> yeah. in Pac-Man because I grew up as a kid in the 80s. Yeah. Stranger Things, like that was my life, right? So I, I invoke Vanilla Ice on my trainings to talk about solving problems. Like, yeah. Because if you got a problem, yo, I'll solve it. I'll check out the moves <laughs> when my DJ revolves it. Like, <laughs> yes. I'm a total ham. Yeah. When I teach LinkedIn, when I do train, because it's boring. Who wants to learn about LinkedIn? It's boring. So I, that's my infotainment. I'm giving yeah. you the practical tools for LinkedIn in an entertaining fashion. And what I have found, Mike, is I can bottle all that up as an online course. All the tools are available. There's no more gatekeepers to creating video, audio, written lessons. Right. Now, how do you scale that? Well, you need a traffic source. I use LinkedIn and the one-on-one -on -one approach and automation and VAs to get people into an automated content funnel. So then I create all the content once, webinar, book, you know, online course, whatever. And then I have automated email sequences with decision trees. If they click this, send this. If they don't open this, wait seven days and send this. If yeah. they open this and click this, but don't buy, send this. And once you map all these things out with automation, people pre-qualify and pre-select themselves. So yep. I literally have it down with all my online courses where I never talk to you live until you're on the sales page. And then I have a live chat box that pops up so I can talk to you for two minutes and close you into a you know, $2,000 course. Sure. And it's all pre-done. The content qualifies people. That's, That's right. the great advantage you and I, like you're putting on podcast seven days a week. You're freaking nuts. Yep. But here's the thing. <laughs> You're going to build up so much familiarity and equity and trust with your audience that when you decide or, you know, however you want to automate them into something, they're going to follow you and trust you because you've earned that right. You've earned the right to ask them by showing up every single day, every single week over and over and over. So they're going to trust you when you say, go buy this. Here's my affiliate. That's right. And that's, that's at the end of the day. Yes, there's hard work involved, but for me, I automate it all so that I'm not tied to trading dollars for hours instead so, yeah automation is yeah. huge i mean if you if you went if you break that down in terms of how you built the life you want to live you've been, you, you're able to automate like you just said you you're able to find a way and if you don't know how you can you can obviously jump on your videos and see this but pre-qualifying things like leads knowing yes. who to talk to and who not to talk to that's so important i mean why are you jumping on a call with someone that you know already likely is not going. I mean, at practice at first, that's okay. I like that idea. You know, practice a script, get the personality down. But if they're not qualified, what, what are you doing? I think. And so that's, that's really, you're wasting that person's time, unfortunately, and yours. Right. And so I think from a sales perspective, that's important. But from a life's perspective, I, I appreciate that. Can you automate your life and your business as much as you, let's just say yes, as much as you possibly can, you should be doing so. 
Yeah, and, and like here's simple, here's a simple way to walk through this. Step one is you pre-qualify people by only connecting with someone on LinkedIn. That's your exact decision buyer and you know, purchaser key person. You don't connect with the retired school teacher. They're not gonna buy your online course for entrepreneurs, right? <laughs> like yeah. so you connect with the right person, that's one pre-qualifier. Now you invite them to consume free content. If they say yes, they're moving further into your funnel. They're qual they keep raising their hand more and more and more. If they say no, great, save your time, move on. They're not a good, like you don't have to win everyone over. Like just sort people, get them down a decision tree as quick as you can, yes or no, yes or no, yes or no. The more they say yes, the more they move through your automated content, they get to know, like, and trust you, there's information, there's value, they start going, guy's crazy with these 80s jokes, but it's kind of fun learning. I kind yeah. of enjoying it and getting some quick wins and the info is really good and, oh, he's got a webinar. I'll go on that. It's all automated. But you see me on the webinar. I'm on camera. I'm talking. More trust, more trust, more trust. At the end, I have a deadline offer, right? Go here. You can talk to me live. You're completely warmed up at this point. You've raised your hand so many times that I'm now only talking to the most qualified lead possible instead of the old days where – you're driving over, someone says they wanna have coffee and pick your brain, you have no idea if they're qualified, what their yeah. budget is, if they're interested in anything, you're wasting all this time, you're using all your energy, you dressed up, you had to shower for crying out loud, you had to comb <laughs> your hair. Like, exhausting. I never leave my house. <laughs> like, I exhausting. literally yeah. don't leave my house. Yeah. yeah. And I, that's what's freedom to me. Because yeah. my boys are young, like we can pick up and go, and like I don't miss all these elements of their day. That's, now, does it take a ton of courage yeah. and cojones to be an entrepreneur? Yes. Yep. Do I have scary days? Of course. Like, not everybody can do this, but I will say the opportunity is there. You Absolutely. just have to put in the work and learn and follow someone like Mike, who's, you're obviously doing the work, right? <laughs> like, yep. seven right. days a week. You're, you just told me you're doing all these interviews, and it's like, yep. there's so much value in that. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate man. that. And I appreciate your time here. Can, let's, before, we, before we exit, where can people find you again? Give me your website. Yeah, linkedinriches.com. Linkedinriches.com is where you can find me. You can get a free copy of my book, free webinars, trainings, templates, all kinds of stuff. Go to linkedinriches.com or just look for me on LinkedIn, John Nemo, like Finding Nemo. It's the worst movie ever, but now people know my last name, Find Nemo. Get it? <laughs> that's right. So, so that's John. how you can find me. Find John Nemo, everybody. John, again, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.